So guys, just giving you a quick intro to the video. Um, the Lord laid it on my heart to talk about the authority of man is not, the authority that God has given man is not made for it to go to another man. One man is not supposed to be submitting themselves to another man. And now this is going to take wisdom and guidance. A lot of people may go against it, but this is what the Lord has given to me and he's showing me. You know, a lot of times when people are standing there and they're just serving this man, you see all the men doing this. Believe me that while a lot of the men are doing these things, there is a message that's being relayed to the families of that man, a message that's being relayed. If those men have two sons and the 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 one son's father is serving the other son's father, there is something that the pastor, the man who is being served, his son is learning something. And there is a certain, um, even though they may be friends and they play around, they're getting the impression that actually their dad is more important. And so therefore they are more important. Because children are going to mirror and they're going to look what they see and the authority that you walk in or you don't walk in, they actually mirror that themselves to that. And so it's time for the men of God to just step up in their authority. And this is something, even if you don't know how, I am going to encourage you to get in the presence of the Lord and he will show you. He is your heavenly father. So whatever your natural father didn't do, he will show you. Too often men are walking in a position of subservience and not authority. You have something that you can give, that you can that you can add to, you know, any foundation or any organization, whether or not you have the background of the education. God placed something in you from Jeremiah chapter 1. He knew you from before you were infused in your mother's womb. So whatever your circumstances and your surroundings around your upbringings are, it has nothing to do with your authority in Christ when you become a child of God. So guys, I hope that you all are able to kind of take a look at this and, and pray about it. Because one thing is when everyone is lauding and lionizing one man, there is a message that's being sent. There's something about this man that he is deserving of all this attention and all this service. And it should never be. We're all in the body of Christ to learn. And whether it's happening in a church building or in a Zoom sec, a, a Zoom setting or in home churches or when you gather together, there is too much of the, what there is just too much of this usurping of authority that's going on and men are being demasculated if that's the word. Is that demasculated or emasculated? I can't think of the word. But um they're being they're being stripped of that they're already being stripped of that in other ways but in the church they try to do it and make it seem like you're going to get something but no what you're doing is you're changing your image before god you're exchanging your authority that god has given to you and giving it to one person and that is why you find many men inside of the church acting crazy this is when they feel like they can tell you what to do in your family they begin to direct you what you can do in your marriage they can direct you in what your kids should or should not do this is when your wife begins to bypass you and go to him your children will more so follow him than you because you gave him your authority there's certain things you should never do anytime a man walks into the house of god or he gets in the presence of another man it should never be about trying to you you are now serving them and that's what they do they they size you up and sometimes what they do, they get you in their circle if they think that you are beneficial to them in some way. And then now you end up, you know, it's called a soft serve. So they take their time and warm you up to the idea. And slowly you'll find yourself living to do stuff for them, running down to the church to hurry up and get what they need or running to, it just gives you such great pleasure to see him smile. This is not natural guys. It's really not. So I want you to understand that you can serve, you can do things, you can be a blessing to other people. You can be a help to others while maintaining your power and your authority in Christ. I hope you enjoyed this video. Peace. So guys, I'm going to touch on what may be a delicate topic, but it is what the Lord has given to me. I'm not sure what the title will be yet, but I know it's going to be somewhere talking about men are not to submit to other men. It is not God's ordained order and will for a man to submit to another man. And I'm talking about in today's churches, um, you know, people often compare themselves to the men of old and how things were done back then. Um, these were different times, okay? And a lot of these men were walking in full humil humility to the Lord. 
This was before now, this is before Jesus dying on the cross and now giving us a comforter. According to John chapter 14, you'll see also in John chapter 16, the comforter, the Holy Spirit has come to lead, to guide, to reprove us. We have the Holy Spirit. And so there's a difference between fellowship and you being submissive to another man. Men being submissive to another man. This is not God's order. And so I'm going to read something to you guys and I'm going to explain this and I hope that it will make some sense. Okay, so I'm going to read you 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. Now that whole scripture itself is pretty good, but this is the only place the Lord wants me to go. Um, all right. But I say, but I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man and the head of Christ is God. All right, let's look at this order. First Corinthians chapter 11 and three says, but I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is is the man and the head of Christ is God. If we go back to Genesis, you'll see that God did not make two men, okay? God did not make a mediator. So he didn't make E make Adam and then make a mediator to cover Adam and then Eve. Just like he didn't make Eve to be the mediator for for Adam, she was his help me. She was from his rib. But God did not make two men in the beginning to say, okay, I'm going to have uh, someone that can cover Adam or someone that Adam can submit to and consult with in order to talk to me or someone that Adam can guide and, and you know, make Adam one, Adam two, and then Adam is going to this first Adam is going to have priority over the second Adam and he's going to direct him and tell him what to do. And then this Adam is going to talk to me and get everything from me to give to that Adam. I know that may sound weird, but I'm sure you got what I'm saying. There was one man, one woman and God. Okay. And so I'm here to tell you that the only crown on anyone on any man's head is God. The head of the man is God, not another man. And what's happening is people may say that and say, oh, we believe that. But when you look at what's going on in the church, you're finding that when men, strong men, or even a man who may still be trying to get to know the Lord when and he's not sure when he comes in, there's a thing to feel. I need to submit to this other man. And so now you're finding men, they, they are just, you know, we have, they have what they call armor bearers, which is another word that's just been taken out of context and used in this way that is nothing what it was in the Bible. An armor bearer is someone that actually carried the armor of a king and went into battle, into war with him. An armor bearer does not stand there with your child. He does not carry your garment bag. He does not. He or she does not carry your garment bag. He is not going to bring you some water. None of those things that you are capable and able to do yourself as a man. You're not preaching that hard. No one is preaching that hard that you really just cannot reach out for your water. Because when you go to the gym and you're running on that treadmill really, really hard, you have your own water. You're carrying your own towel. You know what I'm saying? There's no one doing that. If you went to the gym and there was a guy standing right next to you, you lifting your weights and you want some water and there's a guy there to hand you your bottle of water so you can sit between your between your reps and a guy that's there handing you a towel and carrying your towel for you, you wouldn't even let that happen. All right. And that would just be the highlight. There will be, it will just be, it will be pretty hilarious. But yet this is going on in the body of Christ. And I'm here to tell you that the man is often being displaced. This is a thing of the enemy to kind of displace the man to take his crown and his authority. So you find a man being subject to another man and not having, he's standing holding his water and giving him his mints and whatever. And I'm sure that it's the way that uh, it's meant is it's, it's, 
supposed to be that this person is somehow this is kind of like people are putting that like how Eli was with Elijah and perhaps how um Samuel yeah Samuel was with Eli and um no different times and these men were completely different I'm trying to tell you a lot of men that you find in authority right now they're not even listening to the Lord. They're not submitted to God. And they have this God mentality. Like I am a mini God. And they are really striving hard to put a capital G on that. Okay. Um, but these are times that men have to be in position in their home. And whatever you've never known, whatever father you've never had, you need to know the, the word of God tells you, call no man father. Call no man father, call no man master. This came out of the mouth of Jesus because we already have a father. Now, outside of your physical dad and mom, you know, people, oh, this is my father and all these different things. Guys, what happens is when a man starts to do that, that means this is, this is a man you're going to for everything. You do not need to do these things, okay? Um... There's nothing wrong with getting advice and counsel, but you must not be submitting yourself to another man in any way. You need to submit to God. And when you submit to God, whatever you don't know, this says this should be the mindset. God, I don't know everything there is to know. Perhaps you didn't have a father figure. Perhaps your father left you. Perhaps he didn't do the right things. Perhaps you didn't grow up in a good home. But I'm here to tell you, God created you. So your first person, the first individual that you should be going to is God for everything. And then he's going to begin to rebuild you. He's going to take down and pull away all those things that cause you to be who you, you know, where you lost your way, you lost your identity. And he's going to build that back in you. And when he brings other people around you, then you realize when you're entering into these places, you're going to. You are going there not to be submitted to anyone, but you're going there with your own crown on your head, your own sense of being through Christ. And then whatever you can help and assist with, you're there to collaborate. You're there on an equal plane. Too many men are walking into the church because that man is on the pulpit. That man, he's sitting over here. They're over there. You begin to become subservient. And they want to put that in you that you need to serve them in order to get the anointing. Why do you want their anointing? God has his own fresh, never used, never sweated on anointed, just anointing just for you. When you enter in this place, you must know that you're a child and you're heir of God. And so while, yes, a part of being a child of God is like, we know we can learn, we can perceive, but then everything goes back to God. You decide and you go to the Lord in prayer as far as, is this right, Lord? Or I don't feel this. I don't agree with this. And the Lord will guide you and lead you. When you go into these places and you're not going to walk in where you have to leave your wife's side, you're not sitting where the sun, this Sunday because you have to sit with the pastor this Sunday and you're standing up there with his towels and with his water and all these things. And your son is sitting there looking at you. Your wife is sitting there looking at you, taking your crown off to go serve someone else. Now, somebody may not agree with me, but the bottom line is, why do you need to give them this water? Because they're telling you and you're being taught that these things will somehow, it's like it's you're being told that in you doing that and you serving him, God is going to honor you. You're being told that in you doing these things, then something's going to be passed on to you. But I dare to say differently. You don't need to do that for anything to be passed on to you because your stuff is not going to come from a flawed being. When God blesses us, he's going to give us the blessings. He may use people to bless us, but it's not going to be through you serving any man in any capacity. If you want to assist and do something that is different, but you should not be doing anything where you can't sit with your wife, you can't sit with your family, and your son is sitting there looking at, your, looking at their daddy, handing the pastor this, handing the pastor that, standing there. Why is this man not able to sit and get the word of God just like you are? And I don't care how much you're saying he's listening. No, he needs to sit there and pay attention and, and, and be paying attention to all the little movements and gestures and, oh, the pastor's sweating. Let me give him this. Oh, he needs, oh, let me get that. Let me carry his Bible. Let me follow him around. Let me go here. After church, you need to be going to your wife, seeing what she needs. 
taking care of your kids, seeing what they learned. Another thing also, guys, things that happens is this authority is taken where the men, they go, this, this one man in church, he's doing, he knows everything. So the, the pastor knows all things. All right. So you are, you have to come to church during the week for Bible study for him to tell y'all and teach you. And then you're going to come to church on Sunday for him, the man, you know, the, the pastor, the bishop, he's going to instruct you all again. And when there's prayer, they have, he has a team underneath that that's tied to him that you can call to do this. And when you want to do this, you got to go to him for that. And Saturdays or whatever days you have to go to get instructions on what you're going to do. Guys, there's too much time where the men is outside the house. The families are too separated and divided. You do things as a unit, as one. It should not be, you have, it's the, it should be a place where men are getting in the presence of the Lord for themselves. They're praying for their family. They're praying for their wives. They're praying for their children. And then they can teach their children. They can teach their, their kids. You can teach Bible study. You don't have to always go to church during the week for someone to give you something. What is needed for your house? What do you need to be teaching your family? There is nothing wrong with that, guys. There is nothing wrong with that. And so what is going on is the authority of man is being taken in a different way. A strong man comes into the house of God with all his, with all his manly attributes, his own mind. And then the thing is, oh, you have to come in here and you need to serve. Men are at the door serving. You're over here doing this. You're over here serving this man. You're over here serving this man. And then there's this little chain of command that goes up. Guys, the enemy is robbing you all blind. The head of the man is a church. Correction. This is who you God. To. This is who gives you. He, I'm sorry. This is who you're going to speak to. You're going to speak to the almighty God. You as a man must realize you have the authority and the power through God to go and stand and speak to your creator yourself. And he will tell you and he will instruct you on what to do. And then he will guide you as you do things. And when you mess up and when you do things wrong, there was not another Adam where the first Adam messed up. So now this Adam need to go tell this Adam what he did so he can intercede for him to God. This is not the order of things. Man, it is time for you to take back your authority. It is time for you to take back your families. Because what you're, what I'm, what God has shown me is that the family are being separated. Your kids are over here in teen church. Your other babies are over here in children's church. Your wife is maybe running around doing a bunch of different things. You're running around doing a bunch of different things for the pastor. You have to drive separate cars because you're going to come home staggered. Your teens after church may be going over here to the youth pastor's house to eat or whatever the case may be. And so then y'all may come home together at some point. But what's going on is you're you're not in you're not in authority. So when people are thinking of not people, the word, your family, they're not thinking to come get the word from you. They're not thinking to come to you to see what you think and to exchange anything with you because they are already plugged into other people in the church that falls under this one man that everybody's submitting to submitting to. You're carrying his Bible. You're carrying his towels. Who's carrying his stuff when he's when he's when he's at home? You're more submitted to this man than you would be to your wife. It is not natural for you to be more submitted to a man than to your wife. You're carrying his Bible, but you're not carrying hers. You're opening up his doors for him, but you're not opening her doors. You're carrying his garment bag, but you're not carrying her purse. You're not carrying her stuff. You're giving him something. You're noticing when he's sweating, but you don't notice when she's sweating. I'm trying to tell you something. This is not your position. This is not the order. You enter into the house of God. When you're going to church, you're going in there as a child of God, as an heir of God. You go, you listen, right? You take what applies and what does not. And you, you, you have control of your family. I'm not saying your kids can't go and do different things, but there's too much splitting up going on. You must have the authority to know, hey, we're all going to eat together. We're all going to get, we're all going to get together. Let's all go do this. Take your family away one Sunday on a trip and you guys have a good time. You do Bible study on the beach or you do Bible study at, on a beach house that you rented and you have a good time. You eat and you go enjoy your family. I'm trying to tell you, it is not just for you to just be 
in a building and under the authority of one man. And so that is why you find there's no control in the house. Sometimes you find that the wife has more respect for the, for the pastor. And then she's trying to make her husband submit to him. And she's mad at him if he's not doing what the pastor said. Because the authority of man is all displaced. I don't know how, I hope I explain this correctly. And I would say for further verification, please get before the Lord in prayer about this. But a part of the problem is that going on today, the man is out of position and he's in all, he's just linked up to these pastors and doing all these different things. And sometimes you'll find why that man can't act right is some of these pastors, they're carnal. And so when they're, and when this man is seeing what the pastor's doing or they're around him, especially if they're part of his inner circle and they're going to on, on, you know, they're on the road with him and things of that nature, you realize they find out that this pastor, you know, has some issues with women and whatever. And then women are around the pastor. And then maybe that man got that husband was set free from that, but now he's around it and there's problems. You understand? You understand there's this inner circle. There's this club that's within the body of Christ. And so that man can't act right because he is tied to and linked and in covenant with a man that is carnal. Okay. A pastor or bishop that's cheating on his wife and does not really see about the things of his household. And so your husband is tied to that. Just like David and Jonathan had a covenant. They had commonalities. They gel together. Okay. So that's what will happen. Now, how to undo all this? You just have to figure it out. To me, it's like, just do it. <laughs> um, Just do it. That's it. You do what God has called you to do. If the some of you, this should not be a surprise. Perhaps God has already been speaking to you about that. When your children are small and they're still in, under your authority, this is when you make your moves and you do the things that God tells you to do. There is nothing wrong with fellowship, but you're not submitting to them. You submit only to God. I'm not telling you to go in there being a wide herb in church and giving all types of trouble. Like, ah, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. That's not what it is. But when you begin to submit yourself to God and he's the head, he's going to give you wisdom. He's going to give you discretion. He's going to give you understanding. He's going to give you counsel. And you're going to know how to operate and do things. You, it's just going to happen. When you're in his presence, he will show you. He will teach you. You'll know exactly what to do. But I'm here to tell you, a big part of the problem is that there's a lot of men who they walk in and they give their strength and they give their authority and power to this man. And then they're doing these things because they're being told, oh, if you do this for this person, then God's going to do that for you. Absolutely not. You can go boldly to the throne of grace. There is no middleman for you. Jesus came and became the ultimate sacrifice for us so that we can come boldly to the throne. But you are the head of your family. And God is the head of you. God wants you to come in his presence. And you need to recognize and realize his specific blueprint for your life. So you can walk in the authority and in the power that he created you to walk in as a man. All right, guys.